with Trash Talk Cousins and welcome, welcome to our YouTube, YouTube channel. So today we want to talk about waste. So what is waste? Uh, the only context we ever use the word waste is when we want to waste time. Waste is when an organism returns substances back to the environment. So what for substances? What substances? <laughs> Pee, dead leaves, dead bodies. Yeah, even dead bodies. Yeah, correct. So when they go back to the environment. So for like animals, they are able to adapt to their nature. So wherever they live, they forage for their food in that area and they make use of that environment. But for us, we're much smarter than that. Yeah, because we need to go to the supermarket when squirrels don't have to. <laughs> yeah, right? correct. Yeah. So we make things for ourselves to live the way that we are living right now. So we make things for our shelter, our homes, we make cars, we make gadgets, we make stuff for our entertainment and along the way uh, we produce waste uh, as a byproduct of accommodating our lives. So not only do we produce waste that is good for the environment, such as poop and pee, we also produce <laughs> yes, they are good, good for, for the, the environment. environment. Right, yeah. but we also along the way produce bad um, byproducts which our environment cannot decompose. Like for example, what do you mean? Plastic waste or things that we don't recycle or toxins. Something just, you know, it just cannot be biodegradable. So that is what we are going to talk about in this episode. Fee, do you know where trash goes? Okay, so as I know, when, let's say for example, when I eat a uh, banana, so I eat the banana because I don't compost at home because I'm too scared of composting, which I should change. Uh, I will put the banana peel in the garbage bin. And then uh, when my garbage bin is full, I will bag it up and put it in the dustbin downstairs and it just magically <laughs> disappears. It's out of my life. I don't right. see it. So, you know, it doesn't really exist. Is that not the is way it goes? It <laughs> so in Malaysia, these wastes are called municipal waste and municipalities elect uh, people like Alam Flora to manage the waste and collect the waste and dispose them at um, designated landfills. So once they do put the rubbish in the landfills, they're compacted and they're just kind of left to rot away, right? Unfortunately, according to research by SW Corp, they discovered that the average Malaysian throws away about 1.17 kilograms of trash a day, right? And this number apparently has doubled, almost doubled from the number in 2005. So on average, Malaysians produce about 38, 000, 38 tons. tons. <laughs> Sorry, 38 tons of trash a day. Isn't that really crazy? Yes. So to put that into perspective, in 2007, the amount of trash that Malaysians produce could build 42 KLCC towers. And that's 2007. 2007. So that means that the number of KLCCs that we can make with our trash has actually doubled. doubled? We can make 84 KLCCs with the amount of trash that we generate today. I don't know if that scares you or not, but it's <laughs> scaring me and it's raining! <laughs> oh god! So the problem with waste, even though you can make 84 KLCCs out of it, <laughs> is that it is really bad for the environment. Because a lot of this waste, all the things that we make, you know, to make ourselves prettier, to, yeah. you know, fill our time and all those things, they're made out of uh, toxic substances. Toxic substances like asbestos or BPA and all these things, when they're left in the landfill, they leach into the earth. Yeah, uh, contaminating the, yeah, our water. Yeah, they con it contaminates our groundwater, the one, the, the water that we drink. And some of sometimes when it rains, uh, this trash, it gets washed into rivers. Yeah. And when it gets washed into rivers, it eventually finds its way into the sea. And right now, we're having a really big problem, in right? In the ocean. Yeah. yeah. In 2050, apparently, there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean. And to 2050 is only in 30 more years. Both yeah. you and me, if our lives are long enough, we'll still, we'll still be, be alive. Living. Yeah, correct. <laughs> right? And there will be more plastic which is a really bad thing because it's killing uh, marine animals and of course at the end of the day the cycle closes and you know contaminates you and me yeah, as well correct right so this is the problem that we want to try to fix 
But I guess then it brings you to another situation. Now that the trash has reached the ocean, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's the Great uh, Pacific, Pacific Garbage, garbage patch. patch. And the size of the Pacific Garbage Patch is about three times the size of France. Oh my God. And that's a really big problem. And the problem with it is that it's not a big island. You can't size it. it yeah you can't see it from the satellite it doesn't look like anything that's happening but if you go there it's like a soup full of plastic you know so the imagery is so jarring So the solution to this problem really is if we look into how our economy functions. How we live right now is in a linear economy where we take, we make, we use we and then we throw away. Yeah. It's a culture so what we need to come up is with a circular economy and that's what um, is being in trend at the moment and what we need to adopt where we close the loop okay so the thing about the linear economy with take make and use and throw away is the throwing away part that Correct. is Correct. creating the waste so in order for us to have like a more sustainable economy and not produce the waste that is, you know, uh, polluting our landfills and our ocean is to close the loop, yeah, correct? correct? So that is where the circular economy comes in. So what is the circular economy? So the circular economy adopts the zero waste principles, which are the five R's. The first is refuse, uh, reduce, reuse, recycle and rot. So the principles of uh, zero waste were actually kind of coined by proponents of the zero waste movement. Zero waste before this, I'm sure that has been practiced for a really long time before. It's just that there was no fancy term to call it zero waste. But if you remember, uh, Bia Johnson, she was the one who really popularized the concept of zero waste. <laughs> made it look like it was doable yeah. right yeah. Uh, to live even though you know to be honest I don't think I would ever be able to live with by Her producing only so one white. jar yes I know right <laughs> one jar uh, of trash but whatever it is um, proponents like Bia Johnson Lauren Singer and many others they came up with a guideline of five R's Sophie, let's talk about the zero waste principles in the context of clothes because everybody wears clothes. Uh, do they? <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> okay, so in the context of clothes, the first principle, which is refuse. How do you refuse clothes if you need to I'm wear clothes? I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. Anyway, uh, so the first thing to remember about clothes and everything else actually is just simply take what is necessary, use yeah. what is necessary. If it's unnecessary, say no, yeah. right? So usually, uh, first of all, maybe you try to audit your wardrobe. Yeah. See what you have. Make sure that all the things that you do have are versatile enough uh, for, yeah. you know, whatever occasions, right? So yeah. when the time comes, say, for example, you go shopping or, you know, you get a cyber sale notification, oh. those, th those four letters are really, really, you know, persuasive, right? But you just have to try really hard to say no. Yeah. Uh, to buying things that you don't need. So that's the first tenet uh, of the zero waste principles, yeah. right? So what about the second one, which is reduce? How would you reduce? So the clothing? second one would be reducing. Like for me, my understanding of reducing would be um, getting uh, quality clothing so that you don't replace them as often. So get something that it might be a little bit more pricey, but quality wise is coming from quality materials, is coming from quality workmanship, and it's versatile enough that you can change it and play around with it so that you don't have to make new purchases just to look different. So what's the next principle? Uh, so the next principle, after you try to, if you can't refuse, you can't reduce, then you reuse, mm. right? Uh, so how do we reuse the what first, you already have what you already have so let's say you sometimes you don't no longer have use for something maybe or maybe like me you just kind of outgrow it or the clothes shrink 
<laughs> right? So the clothes shrink. Oh man. Uh, where can you, you wash do? it too much? Uh, yeah, I wash it too much. So what happens is uh, after that, what you can do is you send them to be reused. You can send them to secondhand shops or to charity shops because if you don't use them, somebody, somebody else, else can will. use them, right? So another way to do it is that if, say, for example, your clothes are ripped, uh, you can just mend them. You, uh, we all went through our older kemahiran gen- hidup. Yeah, right? I think our older generations are much better at this. Yes, yes, correct. Not us. Because yeah. it, the thing is with uh, our economy, it became throwaway culture once the industrialization of the world took place, right? So, but before that, uh, be- but before that, resources were scarce. Yeah. So you have to make use of what you have, and uh, you know when even there was no H and M, there was no. You know, Uniqlo, no, no places where you can go to buy clothes for just 15 ringgit. Yeah. If you wanted clothes, you're yeah. going to have to send it to a tailor or, you know, you have to buy a pattern, sew yeah. it yourself, you know. Yeah. And because all these things, they've already used so much resources and it's difficult to replace. So that's why repairing and mending, yeah. refurbishing, upcycling, you know, using a second hand is really, really important. Yeah. yeah, renting is a really big deal as well because like for weddings, for example, right? Yeah. Okay, you and me, we both bought our wedding dresses, right? I wasn't zero waste then. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but really, do you yeah, actually yeah. use it again? Yeah, that's right. No, not really. Yeah. It, I, we know it's a really special day, but actually, uh, thinking of the option of renting could also be a good way to prevent uh, waste, waste from happening. Right? Yeah. Okay, so the next one is... Recycling. Recycling. So how do you recycle clothes? So recycling clothes is like... Hand me- we, we do it good. I mean like I have one baby girl and she's got, I got two. two. So I guess in a way is putting it back, giving it back to someone. Sort of like reusing mm-hmm. but you hand it to someone else or you can... Actually you can recycle textile too. So it's either hand-me-downs or you can put it back to recycling where people take that material and make another material out of it. So here in Malaysia, there's this cloth lifestyle, a little bit shout out to them, but they do collect like used underwears, used shoes. Jeans. Yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, so there are ways for you to recycle textile. You just need to figure out how and where to put them. So what's the last one? Oh, okay. <laughs> So that brings us to the last principle, which is rotting. So can you rot clothing? I have no idea. I've never tried. So if you buy materials such as like cotton or linen, which are made out of plants, you can actually rot them. But mm. if you buy mixed materials like polyester, rayon, nylon, just look at the tag on the piece of clothing, whether it can be rotted or not. Now people have come up with materials that can you, you can put it in the ground and it really rots Quickly. I don't oh, know if you've seen those videos. I haven't seen them. It takes okay. like two weeks for the clothing to that rot. That is so cool. Yeah. But I don't know how often you can wash those uh-huh. kinds of materials, but there exist those. So you yeah. can rot materials, but it depends the clothing, but it depends on the type of materials they are. Okay. Okay, so we've taken you through how we can mm. um, use the five R's of zero waste on clothes. How we can refuse, how we can reduce, how we can recycle, how we can how we can use, use and, <laughs> rot. and rot clothes. Uh, however, sometimes it's kind of difficult to yeah. apply the five R's to every single part of our lives. Uh, so, you know, I think as long as we just take the five R's as a guideline yeah. and not aim to use every single uh, principle for everything that we do in our lives, it, it will be good. So, how is zero waste actually practiced in Malaysia? So, Malaysian uh, people and the government are actively paying attention towards it. You can see lots of advertisement and lots of campaigns. Um, the ministry itself, uh, MESTEC, M-E-S-T-E-C-C, um, has come up with a roadmap uh, for single-use plastics, which they want to eradicate by the year 2030. So along the lines, they're removing plastic bags, trying to remove plastic straws from the picture. Um, and they are creating that as we go along. Mm-hmm. So that, that was created in 2018, it's 2020. So I'm hoping, looking forward to go seeing the change or improvisation out of that roadmap. Mm-hmm. And apart 
apart from that, there are other uh, non-government uh, bodies, organizations, organizations yeah. that have popped up, like ZeroWasteMalaysia.org, where they come up with guides on how do you do zero waste in the office, how do you do zero waste in shops or on your in your daily lives, in events, spaces, how do you reduce your waste. And they also have these audits where companies who want to practice zero waste and accredit themselves to being zero waste, so they do that certification. And also, they have this map where they pin companies. That Which is fabulous. Yeah. I use that. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes you don't know where yeah. things are. So just so you guys know, in Malaysia, there are these things called bulk stores. Right? So where you get to go and buy your things without packaging. So you bring your own containers and then you go there to buy, you know, everything actually. Rice, flour, sugar, um, yeah. even pasta, soaps, even detergents yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, if you want to know whether one is available around you, you can check it out on ZeroWasteMalaysia.org. Yeah. Right? Yeah, true. Mm. And on another note, there are organizations like Eco Nights where they promote um, sustainable living through education and awareness. There's Eco Breaks, they teach you how to make uh, plastic bricks using plastic bottles where, you know, unrecyclable plastics that you can stuff into those bottles and they make bricks out of them and normally they make like gardening um, architecture in schools and stuff like that. So they do around, go around and um, get education done as well. What else? What are other? I think another way to think about zero waste practices besides bulk stores is the original bulk store in Malaysia, which is Pasar, Pasar Malam. Malam. Okay, so the Pasar Malam yeah. is where you can get a lot of things uh, without packaging because they weigh them out, right? Uh, so you just bring your own containers yes. uh, to the Pasar Malam to get your ikan bilis, to get your onions, to get your fish and chicken. I do that all the time. So if you see a lady carrying a black trolley, trolley. Bag yeah, yeah, yeah. with like five containers that would be me uh, but it's really a really good way to get back um, to going uh, you know packaging free and the I best think. thing about Pasar Malam is you go local yeah um, although some may be sourced from Cameron Highland or elsewhere, yeah, or elsewhere. but at least they're local products closer to home you know mm -hmm. yeah and also the most important part is that it comes without packaging yeah true. right okay so in this episode, we've talked about the problem of waste yeah. and how it can really adversely uh, affect uh, the environment as well as you know human beings, plants and animals. Uh, other animals as well. And so we talked to you also about you know, the solution to this problem, yeah. which is from turning from a linear economy to a circular economy. And when we talked about the uh, circular economy, we talked about how zero waste, the zero waste concept, the zero waste lifestyle, can be a big solution, yes. right? So what about the zero waste uh, concept did we talk about today? Talked about the? We talked about the five principles, which is the Remember. refuse, reduce, Do? reuse, Re recycle, and rot. rot. All right, so, and also we talked about how some of the zero waste practices are architected in Malaysia as well. So if you guys know any other people or any other organizations that do uh, utilize zero yeah. waste here in Malaysia or anywhere else, we would be really interested to know and to learn as well. So I guess that's all for today, right? Okay, so again, this is Fee, this is Izati. Izati. So thank you very much for tuning into our YouTube channel. So we'll see you again on Thursday. Thursday. Next Bye. week, bye-bye.